So once again, good morning. And we are honored to have all of you join us for this landmark event where Indian organic market and its promotion are talked about. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome all our distinguished dignitaries that have graced the occasion with their presence. We would like to welcome Chairman Apida, Shri Abhishek Dev, and uh, Mr. Uh, Vipul Mittal, National Cooperative Organic Limited, Shri Pankaj Agrawal, Managing Director, Trita Agro Private Limited, Mr. Anil Jadav, Regional Director, South Asia and Middle East uh, EcoCert, Mr. Krishnendu Chattopadhyay, Vice President, Agrobusiness Nature Biofoods, Mr. Kapil Malviya, Business Head, Organic ITC Limited, and our knowledge partner, Ms. Priyanka Oday from Brussels. So our sincere thanks to all our esteemed uh, guests and exporters, participants, for joining in this occasion and this important program, where the efforts have been made to fulfill the vision of convergence of innovation, sustainability, and quality. So organic farming and organic products are vital to fostering a healthier, more sustainable world. So by promoting natural processes, organic farming enhances soil health, preserves biodiversity, and reduces pollution. This approach not only yields more nutritious and safer food, but also supports environmental stewardship and resilience. As consumers increasingly <coughs> seek transparency and sustainability, so they are looking forward towards the organic products to align their, their personal health and ecological, uh, ecological responsibilities. So today we gather here not only as an organic product industry leaders and enthusiasts, but as a united community committed to advancing the organic movement. This workshop will provide an exceptional platform to share our collective knowledge and the collaboration that can truly help make organic product a mainstream choice. So with these words, now I would, I would like to welcome all our dignitaries. I would like to request my colleague Sunita Rai to welcome Shri Abhishek Dev, Chairman Apida, with a flower of bouquet. And so we would like to mention that we, the House of uh, Himalayas Uttarakhand has also expressed their wish to present the product hamper from Uttarakhand. Again, I would like to request my colleague Sunita Rai to welcome and felicitate Shri Vipul Mittal, Managing Director, National Cooperatives Organic Limited. I would like to request my colleague Bushra Faridi to welcome and felicitate Shri Pankaj Jagrawal, Managing Director, Trita Agro. It's a public limited. In fact, this is a hamper from your region only. <laughs> now I would like to request my colleague Sandeep Shah to welcome and uh, felicitate Mr. Anil Jadav, Regional Director, South Asia and Middle East EcoSurf. I would like to request my colleague Nasira to welcome and felicitate Mr. Krishnendu Chattopadhyay, Vice President, Agrobusiness Nature Biofood. I would like to request my colleague Bushra Faridi to welcome and felicitate Ms. Priyanka Oday, our knowledge partner from Crystals.
so thank you thank you everybody uh, today's platform will encourage you to engage with the thought leaders and take full advantage and invaluable networking opportunities available thank you for being a part of this workshop your presence and participation are integral to the success of this event and the continued growth of indus organic industry let's make the most of this opportunity to learn connect and shape the future of the organic products together so with these words again i would like to request a welcome chairman apeda and would re request to deliver his keynote address thank you madam and uh, very good morning to all uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, all the distinguished uh, panelists who have uh, consented to be a part of this workshop and i would also like to thank uh, the uh, uh, audience uh, who uh, this morning have uh, braved the daily traffic and uh, made made it in time uh, for this uh, workshop so the aim of this workshop basically is to uh, uh, have a brainstorming session and a workshop on how to uh, increase india's organic exports uh, globally so uh, india indian organic sector is a growing sector and we recently got a study done by crisil uh, ms priyanka is here she will uh, uh, shed more light on the findings of the uh, study uh, as per the estimates of crisil uh, indian organic market is a 2 billion plus market initially it started off as more of a export oriented market but uh, now there is a very uh, good and a growing uh, domestic demand also uh, for organic products so apida as the secretariat for the national program for organic production is a key stakeholder uh, in the organic ecosystem uh, for exports npop is the uh, standard for uh, organic products though for uh, the domestic consumption uh, we have uh, npop and the pgs standard so of course we are working very closely with the ministry of agriculture which is implementing the pgs standard also so that the organic uh, sector uh, grows domestically also so uh, you can see we have a very uh, key and uh, distinguished panelists from a host of uh, 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 organic uh, ecosystem uh, mittal ji uh, is uh, from ncol uh, which is the key uh, 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 key organization which is uh, working on promoting the uh, cooperatives to come in the organic ecosystem and also to bring the organic products to the consumers at affordable prices we have uh, from uh, the uh, nature bio uh, our uh, dear colleague uh, they are doing very good uh, uh and very uh, state of the art plant they have in uh, sonipat i just uh, went a few weeks back and uh, they are exporting uh, organic products to uh, us and uh, we have a distinguished panelist from preeta agro uh, who is uh, doing a, a great job uh, from uh, Uh, working with different grower groups in uttarakhand and taking their products to uh, the global stage we have mr jadhav from ecocert uh, from the certification body certification bodies as we all know are a very key stakeholder uh, in the organic ecosystem because the products that are finally certified uh, can be exported and also are accepted by the importing countries so uh, Uh, we uh, from a pida side uh, i would just like to say that uh, are working on different fronts to promote organic exports very soon you will see the new npop uh, regulation of 2024 uh, we have worked on uh, various aspects to uh, strengthen the uh, uh, npop regulation uh in terms of the oversight on the operators but at the same time we are also working to uh, bring in more transparency and to bring in ease in operations for the operators so it should be a convenient uh, uh 
ecosystem for all the operators to operate in and to export we are bringing in more transparency in the operations of everyone so that uh, what they are growing uh, what to what extent they are planting uh, to what extent uh, they are uh, where they are based uh, all these details will now be in the public domain as per our new uh, regulation and we are also uh, bringing in more uh, democratic setup in the grower groups so that in case the grower groups want to uh, transition out to form new grower groups or to change the grower groups it will be more easy for them uh, at the same time we are also uh, uh, increasing the uh, certification ecosystem very soon you will have four new certification bodies that will be accredited, that uh, have been approved by the nab and they will uh, start their operations having more certification bodies uh, is being done so that uh, the uh, cost of certification comes down at the same time uh, we are also working to promote the organic uh, agricultural exports abroad we recently signed an mou with the uh, lulu group just a week back wherein uh, they have agreed to have a dedicated uh, shelf in all their uh, 250 plus uh, lulu malls abroad and all our organic products will be showcased there by them uh, both abroad and also domestically further uh, they have also agreed that uh, every year they will uh, give exposure visits to uh, 10 fpos fpcs cooperatives or grower groups which are involved in the organic production uh, to the uae so it will be a very good uh, exposure visit for our fpos uh, they can see the global market yesterday we again had a uh, mou with them on the horticultural products so we are working on in improving the uh, in the export promotion events and uh, we have uh, this year participated in two uh, events already uh, one is the nature uh, one is the natural products uh, expo in anaheim and there is one more event which is coming up in dubai next year in biofag nuremberg in the next financial in this financial itself we are taking a very large space over there and there is a proposal that in 2026 we become the partner partnering country with the biofag nuremberg so uh, uh, on the promotion side also we are taking a host of steps in which uh, we can uh, uh, increase the footprint of our products abroad finally uh, we are also uh, Uh, we are cognizant that uh, with respect to npop uh, trace net there are a lot of issues and problems which the operators are facing so every week we have a system of uh, video conference where our officers every week uh, sit uh, uh, dedicatedly and uh, listen to all the problems of the operators and we make sure that to great extent those problems are solved uh, further at the same time we also are uh, now uh, completely revamping the trace net system so that uh, uh, we uh, hear the normal issues of delays in the issuance of the transaction certificates and uh, the system hangs or it is very slow so that problem is also be sorted out very soon by next month uh, that will be over and finally we are now also launching a global uh, uh, organic uh, exports uh, uh, campaign uh, in uh, conjunction with the uh, ibf and uh, next month that also will be launched so uh, uh, i thank all these uh, key all our uh, panelists distinguished panelists who have uh, come together for this workshop and also the uh, all the uh, people uh, all the stakeholders who are attending this workshop uh, we would request that uh, the discussions are a two way discussion if uh, some panel some uh, uh stakeholders from the audience if they want to ask questions they should also be allowed to uh ask there should be some time for that uh from my side unfortunately i have to leave right now because there is a uh, inauguration uh, by the honorable uh, uh, food processing minister in one of our stalls so i have to go there but i'll try to be back if possible uh, to come back with you and uh, share further thoughts on that so with these words uh, thank you to everyone and uh, I do hope that we have a very great session ahead. Thank you. तेरी मैं निकलता हूँ.
thank you sir sir you have rightly said that the domestic demand is also increasing for the product uh, for organic products and this shows uh, the consumers awareness about the organic ecosystem and i'm confident that today's platform will pave the way for collaboration to make more uh, to make organic products as a mainstream of uh, choice of not only uh, in the global market but in india as well so now i would like to request ms priyanka oday our uh, knowledge partner for making a context setting presentation and to further moderate the session over to you priyanka so i would also like to welcome uh, uh mr kapil malviya uh from the itc i would like to request my colleague sandeep shah to present a bouquet and welcome him hello and good morning everyone so as sir uh, just informed that the uh, crisil has recently concluded a study on indian organic market we have done this study for abita and in next few slides uh, we'll take you through the major findings of this study which is related to domestic as well as exports uh, so this is this will be the flow of discussion today we'll be uh, speaking something on the supply and demand side we will be covering about how the indian domestic market is how indian export market is for organic products globally what are the key markets what products actually go there what are some strategized list of products that india within the organic ecosystem can actually focus on going ahead and then a brief discussion on various government initiatives the challenges in the sectors and way forward for the organic industry of india uh to begin with the supply side uh so globally if we see as in calendar year 2022 overall acreage under organic was 96.4 million hectares uh asia stood fourth in rank oceania topping among the regions followed by europe and latin america Globally, if we see, nearly two percent of the total agricultural land has come under organic. While the same stats, if we see from the Indian context, we are actually outperforming the global numbers. If we see from India's point of view, with 4.7 million hectares under organic farming as in 2022, we have nearly 3.2 percent of our total agricultural land under organic farming. So, as can be seen on the chart that is given on the right side. our acreage under organic uh, acreage under organic farming is increasing at a cagr of 13% again outperforming to the global average which is growing at a cagr of 9% but important thing to notice in the indian organic farming system is we are highly concentrated in just four states that is madhya pradesh maharashtra gujarat and rajasthan so this is what calls for diversification of organic farms across various regions to reduce the risk it could be a biotech or a abiotic risk but this needs a diversification going forward uh coming to the producer section if we see 
Here, if we see where is Asia placed, here we rank the first. While in acreage we ranked fourth, in producer segment we ranked first, largely led by contribution from India. So India actually contributes to 55% of the global organic producers. But one thing that should be noted here is, while the global average land holding size of an organic farmer is 21.4 hectare, in India it stands to around 1.8 hectare. But then thanks to the existing process where aggregation and producer groups are being focused to produce organic as well as procure from them. But again, this needs to be strengthened further through further aggregation and linking them to the market. Uh, typically, if we see the type of farmers that exist in India, in the organic ecosystem, uh, we have three types. One are the traditional farmers. Traditional farmers are typically the farmers from northeast that are traditionally doing the farming that is organic. They are not scientifically doing it to be organic, they are traditionally organic. My second set of farmers are reactive farmers. So these reactive farmers are who have taken up organic in a response to negative impact of uh, conventional agriculture. And these farmers include the farmers who have NPOV certification as well as PGS certification. So this forms the major chunk of my organic farming ecosystem. My third set of farmers in organic ecosystem are the commercial farmers who have a commercial bent of mind, who want to earn through selling it, who wants to commercialize their produce in domestic as well as largely export markets. They again have a share of you know, farmers coming from NPOP as well as PGS segment. So here again we see there is a huge scope of converting farmers from traditional reactive to the commercial angle. So again, which is showcasing the huge potential that Indian organic ecosystem has. Uh, so here we are discussing about Indian organic production. So including the fiber crop, if we see, our organic production has grown at a CAGR of 7% between fiscal 2019 to 24. But if we exclude the fiber crop, fiber crop is largely the organic cotton fibers. So if we exclude that, our production has been reported to decline by 6%. So this is largely because uh, this decline has largely happened after 2021 because 2021 there had been some regulatory hindrances uh, in the organic Indian organic ecosystem when USA had actually withdrawn its organic recognition certificate uh, agreement and had also imposed anti-dumping policy for Indian organic soybeans. So overall, this act of USA has actually been observed to have led to decline in production of 9 out of 16 categories that Indian organic system had in a major way. While this was the supply side story, the next part of our discussion would be on demand side. So what's the demand globally? Where is the demand? So here in this picture, as we can see, North America and Europe, they hold 90% of the organic market. While EU countries have a very huge penetration, but USA in terms of size is the largest. It, it has around 43% share in the global organic market. Uh, further within EU, if you would like to see where do we have a larger scope. So Switzerland is the country that has highest per capita income, uh, per capita consumption for organic products. Uh, whereas, you know, uh, market share of organic products in the overall market is, is uh, highest in Denmark, followed by Austria and Switzerland. Very interesting thing that can be seen in the map over here is among all the North American and European countries, we have one Asian country and that ranks third and that is China. So China gradually has gone a long way in organic, be it import or export, and with relatively lower acreage as compared to India and lower number of producers also as compared to India. So China recently has taken this position. Before this, you know, instead of China, it was actually France which was at the third position. Now, while this was the global, the international, the global demand, we would now understand the Indian domestic organic market in little detail. So overall, if we see Indian organic market, inclusive of export as well as domestic scenario, overall, if we see, we estimate the market is around 16,800 crores as in 2023, which is near to 2 billion USD. 
1.4% share of global organic market and if we compare it to the share in Indian FMCG market, it's nearly 1.2%. One important thing to be noticed here is out of the 16,800 crores, 32% of contribution comes from export, 20% from the domestic branded organic segment and 10% from domestic unbranded organic segment. So rest of the 38% that is being produced in the country is actually, it never enters the organic route. It is sold as conventional due to lack of adequate market linkages. So again, as you can see, this 38% can also come back in the organic ecosystem through a proper, proper uh, strategy that can be set up for the market linkage. Uh, as we can see here, the Indian organic market between 2019 to 2023 has grown at a CAGR of 17%. While if we see the global average during the same period, the global organic market has grown at a CAGR of 8%. Typically, if we see, you know, when did we grow the most? It was the pandemic time, 2021, wherein Indian domestic organic market witnessed a growth of 21%. And thereafter, it was a success story, as you can see in the graph, we have kept growing in the domestic area. Within the various product categories that is there in the domestic market, pulses rank first with 22% share, followed by cereal and millets, spices, edible oil, dairy, and then comes fruits and vegetables. So these nearly contribute to 75 to 80% of the total organic market domestically. Uh, if we would discuss about what are my channels, where, from where do I get, from where do customers actually purchase these organic produce? So 40% of the contribution comes from modern trade, followed by 35% from the general trade, and 25% comes from online marketplaces. If we would see what was the contribution of online marketplaces pre-COVID, it was merely 10 so the pandemic era has actually boosted the organic market as well through the e-commerce platform. Uh, going ahead, you know, if we would like to discuss that currently we are at 60, uh, we are at, uh, you know, a certain number for the domestic market. How do we see it going ahead in the next 10 years? So for that, we need to understand what are the drivers that is actually pulling up my organic market. So among the drivers, the very first one would be the health cautious individuals. How are we seeing this population growing? So we are seeing this population to grow at a CAGR of 8% and reach to around 317 million by 2033. Again, organic product is something which is very concentrated in the urban, urban area. How is my urban population growing? We are expecting it to grow at a CAGR of 2%, reaching around 600 million by 2036. Similarly, people who earn more than 10,000 USD per annum, that is a target range that actually the key organic market globally keep when they target, you know, where they should export. So considering the same benchmark for Indian scenario also, we are seeing that this segment of population is expected to grow at a CAGR of 14% and reach about 165 million by 2030. And then of course, monthly per capita expenditure that again plays a very major role and we are seeing a healthy growth there too. As a part of study, we also conducted a small customer survey, consumer survey. Uh, we interacted with around 1200 consumers across 10 cities of India to understand the purchase behavior, to understand what is actually pulling them towards organic or what is actually hindering them that from growing towards organic. So overall, if we see when we ask that, how do you identify that a product is organic? They say we look for some logo. They, they definitely, so my 66% of my consumers say they look for logo, but then they are not completely aware of what is the meaning of different types of logo. So that is where an awareness needs to be created. If we say what percentage of your overall grocery budget are you currently giving for organic? So around 38% of my respondents said less than 10%, but another 38% of my respondents said my share of organic expenditure in total grocery budget is between 10 to 25%. And 44% of those again said we can further increase it by 10 to 25%, but given an assurance of traceability, given an assurance of trust that we are buying a real organic product. 
so people are willing to purchase like we can see here when we asked you know how did you initiate the organic consumption pulses were the first crop that was being that has been you know tried by maximum of the consumers during our survey followed by tea and jaggery what consumers are actually looking for but they are not getting is fruits and vegetables which they are willing to pay they are willing to pay premium as can be seen in the pie chart on the right hand side lower right hand side so 57% of them say that organic with the type of benefits it gives we are ready to pay a premium for it but then assurance is required a traceability is required so with all these factors considering the drivers a consumer survey consumers buying behavior we understand and we expect the domestic industry to grow by 13 to 15% and reach around 12500 crore by 2033 and in this growth one of the major contribution would come from the processed food product which we are expecting would grow at a cagr of 25% during the same period followed by fruits and vegetables as well as dairy if we talk about uh, <coughs> india's export trend india's export in organic market so here we can see that you know uh, during 2017 to 2021 global imports they had increased at a cagr of 10.3% while india's export during this period had grown at a cagr of 11.5% again minorly but outpacing the global average but post 2021 when the impositions were laid when the uh, regulation regulatory issues had cropped in that actually decelerated the growth decelerated the growth of indian organic exports so we can see with the ban our cagr from 11.5% it reduced to 7.2% between 2017 to 2022 nonetheless uh, the matrix at the right hand side gives you know it places various countries in terms of their value share as well as growth so basis this matrix it's very clear that you know us france they are they are the country that actually demonstrate a strong market presence and they also demonstrate strong growth prospects also while the countries like canada uh, czech republic korea these are some countries wherein you know while their market share their value share would not be that high but the growth is quite good and they again are some promising zones where we can strategize our products going forward uh this again says you know like we can see the trend that is being shown pre and post regulatory impositions on indian organic so if we see you know with between fiscal 18 to 2021 uh at value level we were growing at a cagr of 21% 28% which has now declined to minus 22% but then we need to understand that it's temporary it's a regulatory issue once solved india is in a complete readiness to again capture the market and get back to the trajectory uh these are the top 5 uh, uh countries uh, where india exports the organic products so of our total exports us has 49% share followed by eu which has 33% share canada and uk have 4% share each and switzerland has 2% share of our total exports that india does globally again US and EU these are the top two markets which every country is focusing on so if we see you know in US exports imports so in 2022 US imported nearly 21.7 lakh metric tons of organic products so of this if we typically see what was the major contribution from which product 46% contribution was coming from organic tropical fruits and within this 46% 25% share was of organic bananas which india uh, is currently strategizing to focus on going ahead similarly if we see eu out of 27.3 lakh metric tons of uh, you know organic produce that they had imported 32% share was from organic tropical fruits of which again 32% share was organic bananas ecuador uh dominican republic peru these are the key exporters to eu considering you know what is the demand at the key or key you know organic destinations and how can india play in which crops can india play so here we have strategized 
like this particular matrix would actually tells like the first one product india has large play it says that these are the products where india has strength and these are the products that is in global demand so for these products like soy meal rice sugar coffee mango is where we can play very large second one says that global demand is there but india is currently not focusing in a very big manner so but again here where we can strategize and put forward so these are the product list coming in the center and then third part is where india is a brand we have a brand like for millets for medicinal plants for spices where we can do big and has global demand also so considering categorizing the products into these three categories the focus products that has been identified by us are banana ginger rte medicinal plant millets fruits and vegetables now here are some of the initiatives by government in terms of uh, paramparagat krishi vikas yojana wherein they facilitate production of organic produce the establishment of cooperative society for export promotions like ncol and ncel there are awards and recognitions also to motivate the farmers uh, there are several initiatives that apeda has taken in this direction like dedicated organic promotion division to promote organic exports uh, apeda has also put up efforts for collaboration with trading partners like mutual uh, recognition agreement with taiwan was implemented in july 2024 and they are also engaging in talks with australia and south korea to establish similar mras organic foreign trade agreements are also being negotiated with united kingdom european union peru oman to name a few and as sir is as sir just informed you know they are also renovating the npop to make it more user friendly to make it more easy for the whole entire organic ecosystem some key challenges uh, that you know that that may be structural but can be you know addressed are production related challenges it could be related to availability of bio inputs it could be related to availability of bio inputs uh, it could be related to awareness about those things uh, the second important challenge is market linkage in terms of market linkage so currently as we said you know the average land holding size is quite low 38% is getting sold in the conventional market so how is market linkage going to uh, you know that's an important challenge to convert this 38 into the organic ecosystem lack of proper facilities in terms of processing infra again that needs to be focused and then promotion related that's very important because we said they see the logo but they don't know what that logo is about which logo will give them the maximum assurance so promotion awareness these are some very important facts that currently needs to be focused uh, to promote the organic Uh, so basically yeah a uh, way forward for organic industry would be promote organic export by focusing on strategic product which i just mentioned and targeted regions intensifying the mras promoting india organic brand which sir said that they have already taken some steps in this regard globally as well as in domestic area develop proper infrastructure especially for processing because we are seeing rte is going to have a major role going ahead so that should be kept in uh, focus developing domestic market by increasing consumer awareness and strengthening indian organic supply chain through collaborative model that's it from uh, these are the key findings from our uh, studies uh, so what we will do now is we will immediately start with the panel discussion so once the panel discussion is done then the floor will be open for question and answer session so uh, as we explore strategies to enhance market access for organic products the role of cooperatives and collective action becomes significant so in this context i would like to pose next set of few questions to mr vipul mittal managing director national cooperative organics limited so sir uh, my question is how can national cooperative organic limited support small scale farmers in accessing organic markets and certification typically the small scale farmers hello can you hear me My 
So uh, thank you, Priyanka, for that uh, very insightful uh, presentation. Uh, I will take back the audience to the first few slides which you showed. Uh, if you see the Indian uh, cultivation of organic is 3.2 percent. Cultivable land of organic is 3.2 percent as against a global average of 2 percent, right? India has 55 percent of the global producers, uh, organic producers uh, are in India, right? So uh, to my mind, India has a very unique uh, ecosystem which I think we all understand, but I would just like to underline the same. Uh, on one hand, you have a very large number of uh, organic producers. They are having very small land holdings. And also, if you look at this data a little more critically, so 96 million hectares is the total organic land in the world. But three-fourths of that land is pastures. So if you remove the pasture land, then our 4.8 million hectares is actually 20% of the total organic land in the world. Okay. On the other hand, when you look at the product-wise cut, which uh, Priyanka showed during the end of her presentation, there is a very interesting mix of products. So the products being traded globally are a very different set of products than the products which are being looked at in India. For example, see, for example, pulses. Now in the export slide, pulses was nowhere there. Whereas in the domestic slide, pulses is right at the top. So I think uh, we as NCOL, which is a very recently formed uh, entity by the initiative of the union cabinet uh, in the cooperative sector, we are a multi-state cooperative society. Uh, we are mainly focused on linking this smallholders farmers of the country to the domestic market. Because our understanding is that if we bring in the benefits of the organic market to the producer, then there will be more motivation for the producer to grow more and more organic products. And that will further enhance the entire ecosystem entire, uh, uh, around the organic industry. And this is further you know, accentuated by the fact that almost uh, uh, out of that 16,800 uh, crores of organic market, 48% uh, is actually going as conventional. Right? So to coming to your question, uh, Priyanka, our approach right now is that we have built a brand called Bharat Organics. Right? So we want this brand to stand for authenticity and affordability. And that is going to be our mainstay uh, you know, strategy to link, the far, to, to link the farmers with the uh, consumers under the cooperative network. So our chief promoter is NDDB. And one of our promoters is GCMMF, Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation. And, and Mother Dairy and Amul are the respective brands which these two organizations are promoting. So we have the wherewithal of the market the understanding of how to how to take products to the market and that is how we are taking the help of these organizations to build the Bharat organic brand. On the other hand, what we want to do is we also want to democratize the, uh, the sourcing mechanism from the smallholder farmers. Because if the Indian farmer is a smallholder farmer, then I think what is required today is that he should know what is the price he will get during the time of harvest for his organic production. And to our understanding, that is something which we are still not there. Like you see, uh, uh, you, today you know what is the mandi price of paddy, for example. But that is conventional paddy. But can anybody tell me what is the mandi price of uh, organic paddy? No. So I think that is the next step that we are working towards, uh, along with, of course, all the stakeholders in the industry. And of course, APIDA being you know the key uh, promoter of NPOP. So we are, we are basically trying to build brand on the one side, and democratize the price discovery on the other side in a cooperative framework to link the farmers to the consumers. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, sir, uh, you know, sourcing from a small, uh, you know, small scale farmers, I think there one important thing that can come into, you know, which we can discuss is traceability and authenticity. How are you, what measures, you know, typically are you going to take to ensure that yeah, that's a good question. So first and foremost, whatever we call organic or whatever we buy as organic has to be certified as per the laws of the country. You know, so that is a non-negotiable uh, first principle. So NPOP and PGS are the two uh, uh, accepted uh, certification processes today in the country. So we will go only to those farmers who have the certification. Now the good part is that in NPOP, there is a tracenet system which runs parallelly. So the whole transaction has to be routed through the tracenet as well as through our system. Now, another level of check that we have implemented in our system is that we do a compulsory uh, laboratory testing. 
So I'm also happy to share with the audience that government of India has taken a lot of initiatives to upgrade a lot of labs in the country to satisfy the NPOP standards. And today, uh, if my uh, memory serves me right, then I think we have about 244 such labs across the length and breadth of the country. So that in every geography that we go and procure, we have a nearby lab where we can take the product, get it tested, and uh, bring it to the consumers. So these are the two things which will ensure the authenticity of the of the. Uh, uh, so we are doing the see process based certification is what we get through the uh, certification, and product based testing gives us the product uh, authenticity. Yeah. Uh, so one one last question. Since organic products, they are perceived to be premium, what measures can be taken to make them accessible to a larger group of people, especially the lower income segment? Do you see this happening? And if it's happening, what measures should be taken? So honestly, I see it happening, absolutely. Because whatever premium you talk for organic, and I'm not talking of exports here, so you know, so whatever premium you talk, for, talk in organic in domestic market has to be linked to the premium that you pay to the farmer. So if you're, if you're paying 2x for, for pulses, then you're, the first question you should ask is, has the farmer got 2x of the conventional price? If the answer is no, then, then you have room to you know, correct those things and grow the market. Because the way we look at it, I think the, the market is here. You saw the chart, the world map. We are, we are not even present in the, in the organic uh, markets which, which we have framed. Whereas the entire world is today looking at the Indian market, which is the largest market in the world. Right. So to my mind, there is a huge opportunity to, to correct the price, to make it more affordable and authentic at the same time and motivate the farmers to grow more because it's a demand supply equation. If the demand will grow and supply will not keep pace with it, then you cannot make it affordable. So to make it affordable, the supply side has, has to grow in tandem with the demand side. And demand exists. I think we are enough people on, on, in this country. I think demand exists uh, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. So moving next, so with uh, consumers increasingly seeking healthy and sustainable food options, companies like IPC Limited are well positioned to influence market trend. So uh, my next few questions will be posed to Mr. Malvia. What are your views on organic customer buying behavior? Do you see the willingness to pay premium for the organic products? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Yeah, definitely uh, the consumers are willing to pay the premium, but it comes with the awareness of the consumer. So the consumer need to be made aware that the premium they are paying is coming with some value to them. So Indian customer always is ready to pay the right price if the value attached with the, that price is visible to that consumer. So if you can make the consumer aware that, that this product is right, this product is, uh, is having certain health benefits, this product is coming with complete traceability and certification backing, then definitely the consumers are paying. And we can see this uh, in the last three years, the kind of growth which we have uh, received in different products which we have launched, launched under our brand Ashirwad. So this shows that if you come go to the customers with the right kind of approach and the right kind of awareness and trust, then definitely consumers are ready to pay the premium. And I would also add on to this that it is not necessary that only the upper class or the rich are paying for it. The middle class consumers who are educated and are aware are ready to pay the premium. So it's not about the class of the consumer, it's more to do with the awareness and the trust uh, point of view of the consumers. Okay. okay. Uh, which category of organic products are doing good for you? Uh, any specific reason for these categories outperforming the others? Uh, so we are into mainly right now into uh, organic Vitata mm -hmm. and pulses. Organic Vitata is doing very good for us. We have in the last three years we have become the number one brand in organic. We, we are already the number one brand in the conventional space. But uh, with, with the backing of that strong Ashirwad brand in Vitata, we have got that benefits for the organic version of the Vita Ashirwad Atta as well. So this is the uh, this is the power of the strong brand, uh, which if it comes to the organic products, then definitely the overall size of the market grows. So this is how we are seeing it, and we are going to launch few more products in the coming months, and then those benefits will also go to the farmers uh, mm -hmm. with the kind of products which which we launch in the coming months. Yeah, that's what I was about to come to. So are you looking for some diversification, and especially? Are you also focusing the export market or you have already started? We have already started. So yeah. it's in which category? And uh, some right experience, now we are some learning yeah. experience. We will so we, we have it. started with rice because it is one of the categories yeah. which you have also mentioned in your presentation. So soya was there, but now yeah. since soya is not competitive enough in the global market, right. so the next big category is rice, uh, which is growing fast. So we are focusing on both the basmati and non-basmati variants of organic rice, especially in the markets of Europe and US. Okay. Uh, 
and typically if we see uh, like we have shown you know tropical fruits and vegetables even in the processed form juices yeah. you know they are doing quite good in the larger markets us and europe so any any focus towards that segment yeah definitely there is a team which is working on the processed fruit segment also so we are looking into mango pulp exports which is another big category in the global organic exports market yeah. So we, we are doing a lot of uh, farming initiatives in the southern part of India where the mango, organic mango cultivation is going on. Yeah, so my next question was related to that only. So how IPC is collaborating with farmers and FPOs to promote organic farming in India? Okay. If you could elaborate your approach of this collaboration and benefits that has been approved by both IPC as well as uh, farmers. So. Uh, I think you must be aware that ITC has been a pioneer in the direct farmer linkages. So we have already uh, established the Chopal model. Mm -hmm. So now we have migrated from that, that model to a more FPO centric model, which is the ITC Mars initiative, which is a meta market for advanced agriculture and rural services. So where we are farming uh, FPO groups across the country. So we are, we are right now farming around 1000 FPOs. Uh, some of these FPOs are being converted into organic FPOs <coughs> wherein the organic farmer groups are being uh, brought together mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the produce of these farmers uh, group are being directly purchased through our uh, uh, a digital platform which is the Mars app. So herein we are giving the farmers uh, not only the physical direct advisory services but the digital services through the, through the app so they can get the crop advisory services the right kind of agri inputs which are required for organic farming and then a platform which uh, uh, Vipul sir has already mentioned that the farmers are not aware the, about the right price of the organic produce. Yes. So through this app we want the farmer to know that what kind of uh, market price will be available for their produce when the uh, crop is there for harvest. Mm -hmm. So we will be directly buying that produce from the farmers through our digital platform. So this will help them in not only in uh, producing their crop with efficiency but also eliminating the middleman so that they can realize better prices and in a way the company will also benefit because we will get the right quality, right prices because there will not be any middleman mm -hmm. and uniform quality which is very much required for any brand to sustain and grow in a, in a market. Thank you so much, it was quite insightful. Uh, moving ahead. As India's organic industry continues to grow, <coughs> company like Treta Agro Private Limited, which is well known as Just Organic, are playing a vital role in promoting Indian products globally. With its expertise in organic farming, processing and export, Treta Agro has established itself as a leader, leading player in the industry. Uh, so, with this context, now next few set of questions will be posed to Mr. Uh, Pankaj Agarwal from uh, Treta. So sir, what are the strategies to enhance the penetration of Indian organic products in domestic as well as global markets? Because you are dealing in both these segments widely. So some strategies sir. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, you know, both the markets are different. Domestic market, Indian organic domestic market is very different from the uh, let's say US organic market or a European organic market and I think the set of strategies is also very different when you talk about the organic penetration. If we talk about the domestic market of course domestic is the largest opportunity you know India is the market that everyone every brand in the world is looking at but I think these strategies have to be more around creating the awareness creating the trust and more importantly creating that factor where it doesn't hurt to buy organic produce and for that the whole chain has to be uh, taken care of. At this point in time a big chunk of the money goes to the retailer or in the distribution segment. So these strategies that basically restrict that particular uh, uh, distribution of the money of the or the organic premium into the distribution or the retail segment versus the money then that gets distributed towards the farmer or basically gets loaded towards the direct uh, farmer and gets benefited to the consumer is basically the strategy that we should be working at or looking at where it is a equal or a fair play for every stakeholder that is there in the value chain for the domestic perspective. Uh, from a product perspective of course fruits and vegetables are one of the key drivers that I see that uh, in the coming months years that fruits and vegetables is the segment that's basically going to drive. Also given the fact that we are going to increase this penetration of the organic certification and going lo uh, vocal for local and food and vegetables are the area where you can actually go for uh, you know vocal for local and connect the local producer to the local consumption. 
when we talk about the export market so the export market is uh, again in the export market there are two segments of the consumers or the buyers one is coming from the indian diaspora and hence the products that we generally sell in india are the products that would also sell out in uh, the us market however the strategy is more around making sure that so when a product is on a shelf let's say in the us it carries that logo and consumers trust that logo that's the biggest part and that's the biggest difference between a indian consumer and a consumer a indian consumer in the us so the indian consumer in us would basically trust on the logo that is out there on the packet and hence you don't have to convince the consumer that this is authentic and all of those things the consumer in the us is more looking towards the impact that you are creating the sustainability the direct farmer connect and of course the quality of the produce so within the organic also you can have 20 different type of qualities and the quality so they understand that it is authentic as long as you have a certification you have a logo on the packet they would understand that yes it's authentic but the quality matters so the strategies from a brand perspective from a product perspective it has to be more centered around the quality and quality which is more related so if we talk about food it's basically the qualities that are generic in food you know you do not have for example the infestation you do not you meet all those micro uh, biological parameters all those quality parameters are important for the consumers along with being organic so these are some of the strategies so creating that sense of uh, trust that when you buy organic coming from india it also carries that kind of quality is the key for the success if we talk about the export in continuation to what you said trust is very important and my next question is on that uh, so what can be done to strengthen the india organic brand because it's the need of the hour every company every manufacturer who is into the market tries to maintain the uh, maximum assurance that we provide an authentic products right so the trust which consumers are having you know in the export market that okay if this is the logo it's an authentic one so what can be done for strengthening the india organic brand domestically as well as in export Uh, very very important and i think we uh, need to look at west for some of the examples that they have adopted mm-hmm. uh, and again you know i i generally go back to the us you talk about california almonds you talk about pistachio you talk about washington apples mm-hmm. you talk about chickpeas coming from uh, the us a chickpea council okay. and they come and do the road shows they connect with all the stakeholders and the stakeholders are basically the institutes Uh, you know the culinary institutes uh, the education institutes and they talk about the the protein the percentage of the protein the, you know the culinary experience what to expect what to expect all those kind of things a continuous campaign around the california almonds right now i mean the kind of almond that you see i think we have lost it to uh, us you talk about walnuts it's completely us and i think this is the exact strategy we should be adopting for brand india we have to go to those places where we want to export and we have to do all those road shows we have to connect with different stakeholders and these stakeholders are not only the distributors and the retailers they case these stakeholders are the for example the vegan societies the institutes that are responsible of making sure that they can popularize a particular product they can popularize a particular uh, uh, quality of the product that is coming from india and we have to connect with them and we have to make sure that yes it is not it is not a direct business linkage it is basically a indirect business linkage where you are first talking about the product you are talking about the quality of the product mm-hmm. and then obviously the business will happen right oh one last question so which market do you find going ahead means 5 years 10 years from now which market do you find to be more lucrative domestic or exports so i think in the long run it's going to be domestic market domestic market and the kind of opportunity that we see in india where we are right now and where we can be it's humongous it's huge and i think india is going to be the market in next if you talk about next 5 to 10 years us for the short term because us recognizes the need of organic you don't have to explain you don't have to promote you don't have to talk about the authenticity on those kind of things and hence from a short term perspective it's still going to be us centric uh, for us as a company for us as a brand but i think in the long run it has to be the domestic market thank you thank you so much sir 
So as India's organic industry it continues to grow, the demand for skilled organic inspectors and auditors is increasing exponentially. Ensuring the integrity of organic certification processes relies heavily on the availability and expertise of these professionals. With EcoCert's India's experience in organic certification, my next few set of questions will be posed to Mr. Anil Jadav. So sir, uh, can you share insights on the current human resource scenario of organic inspectors and auditors in India? Uh, good morning. Hello? Okay. Uh, good morning and uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'll start with some funny things uh, because some look very serious. Lag rahe. <laughs> so this is very rare that someone calls a solution body for business related activities. Ke liye bula jata hai. Normally, when you call it, you call it, you call it, you call it. So, I am very happy to be here uh, talking about uh, future and business and opportunities. So, uh, I am going to divide this uh, question in three parts. Uh, first is, what is the current scenario in India? What is the manpower requirement? Second is, if there is a requirement which is huge, what are the avenues or areas from where we can pick these people? And the third most important part is, Sub, sub upar, paisa kaan se so I have question these are the three questions and sections and I have answers for I think I have answers for all three of this so first is let's uh, see the scenario of requirement of manpower in this industry so organic uh, industry there are couple of uh, segments uh, the supply chain starts with farmers which is called ICS which is a group of farmers uh, who produce so because of the small land holding, we have um, a concept where a group of farmers, minimum 25 to maximum 500 farmers can come together and build the ICS and then start production and exports and uh, domestic sales. Then, then we have single farmers, then we have traders and then we have processors and exporters. So these are the different segments. So if you see the number of ICS in India, it is roughly around 6,000 ICS right now. So 6,000. ICS means with the new NPOP requirement we need one uh, for one ICS we need 10 trained internal auditors. So if you do the maths for 6000 ICS we need right now 60,000 trained manpower only for ICS. Now this looks very big number but you have to see that this 60,000 internal auditors are going to audit. 2.5 million farmers which is like 50 percent of the global uh, producers so now we are talking about 60,000 internal auditors if we add traders and processor that is another 10,000 so we are now looking at 70,000 manpower requirement only for production I am not even touching the part of certification bodies that is separate so now this is the manpower requirement now so if you see anybody from uh, agricultural university here okay so correct me if my data is wrong so there are 74 agriculture universities in India 65 of them are state agriculture universities and around four are uh, deemed universities annually 2.5 uh, UG and um, around 50,000 UP uh, upper education, uh, this th 3 lakh people are participating or entering the agriculture universities across India. The average in last 5-6 years, 65% people pass out or they go, uh, they qualify and get out which brings the number to 2 lakh people who are out of the universities qualified. The unfortunate part is out of this 2 lakh students which are coming out of the university only I am saying only 5 to 10 percent get back to the agriculture or related activities rest of them go to uh, banking manufacturing all other uh, things so this 5 percent of 2 lakh people who are passing out is only thousand so imagine 3 lakh students getting entry and only thousand people are going for agriculture now this is a problem okay so 
now if you see uh, the ratio of uh, people so 2 3 years back 26% of the population of the students entering was female which has grown to 49% now so right now 50% application or uh, entries are female employees and 50% are male employees so this is again is a big opportunity for organic to bring in more female employees and entrepreneurs in organic farming and that's something which work as a cooperative uh, thing if you see the success of amul and all cooperative is all driven by female uh, power so that is something which needs to be harnessed now this number looks very big now talk about 70000 people who needs to be trained I am just talking about NPOP. I am not talking about NOP. I am not talking about EU. I am not talking about sustainable services. I am not talking about Japan, Korea. I am not talking anything. I am talking only about NPOP. So, seventy thousand people who need to be trained, mm -hmm. you have to have at least three days training, at least, to give them basic understanding of requirement and NPOP. So now multiply this seventy thousand with three days. That is two lakh something uh, man days you need. to train the manpower now average make a group of 20 farmers in one training so that itself is 6000 almost 6000 training requirement in india now if you talk about the economics of it average you can say 20000 is uh, i am coming to the solution part now mm -hmm. now if you see uh, the manpower requirement uh, training requirement imagine a group of 20 farmers is one group so average 20000 per farmer is the cost so uh, we come to around 1 140 crores mm -hmm. for training all these people this number looks big only for training okay it is not so now these are the two aspects now coming to paisa so india mein ek achhi cheez hai csr जो फंड है सो एनी कंपनी हुज मेकिंग टर्न ओवर मोर देन फाइव हंड्रेड करोड दे हैव टू स्पेंड टू परसेंट ऑफ देयर नेट प्रॉफिट ऑन सी एस आर नाउ इफ यू सी द सी एस आर फंडिंग इन इंडिया फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ सी एस आर मनी इज स्पेंड ऑन एजुकेशन सॉरी ऑन हेल्थ एंड सैनिटेशन थर्टी एट परसेंट ऑफ दैट मनी इज स्पेंड ऑन एजुकेशन which is basically primary education not the uh, skill develop uh, not the uh, professional one only 8% of csr money is spent on skill development that is the uh, data of 2020 2021 okay now how much is the money available in india so in 2020 and 2021 it is some it was something around 28000 crores Uh, 2022 2023 the fund available under csr was 30000 crores okay. now if you take out 140 crore money required for training is only 0.5% of the csr money so we are talking about a mechanism where government of india apeda producers exporters nobody has to spend any money that money can come from csr there needs to be some tweaking done on how to uh, utilize that money on csr fund so that money can actually go in education of farmers and supply chain if you see the top two expenditures coming or uh, uh, done from corporates on csr uh, this sanitation and health and education that directly doesn't translate into turnover or economic developments of communities whereas this training and investment of money will certainly generate in income for farmers so this is point number 1 about the scenarios now coming back to what is ecocert uh, doing, doing uh, in here this in this scenario so we saw this 5 6 years back as a group so everybody here knows that ecocert or any third party certification comes once in year uh rejected or pass we give a certificate we don't give certification and we go back and we meet next year mm -hmm. so ecosur decided to position ourselves as a solution providing company rather than a certification company mm -hmm. that's why we did some acquisitions of companies who were expert in training and consultancy okay so 3 years back 
we started a discussion with akola university in maharashtra okay. and with partnership of um, with partnership with akola university we developed a one year diploma course for uh, organic and sustainable farming 30 students participate and passed one year course mm -hmm. and it was not just theoretical but it was a practical plus theoretical and they were sent in the farms for actual training and i'm very happy to tell you that out of 30 ecoser selected three but they didn't join because they wanted to go for higher education but out of 36 students mm -hmm. got job in uh, industry uh, there are you know uh, uh, two brothers in pune right. so they have taken some of the uh, students and they have also went in some trading companies so six out of 30 is almost 20 percent of the uh, people who have got this certificate got job in the industry so there is a scope and i met all the exporters and they say we need 10 20 50 the requirement is used Availability is there, but we need to have to bridge this gap. So thank you so much. So one, one more question for you. So uh, how can this data which is collected during organic certification process, how can this data be leveraged to connect certified farmers or producers with buyers and the key markets? Yeah. So again, I'm going to refer your presentation. So basic data is available. What is requirement? So if you see India's uh, scenario, the market is uh, dominated mainly with pulses or something uh, non-perishable but the demand is for fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. so this itself is a good data so the data which is collected by third party certification that can be put in a centralized database mm -hmm. uh, right now i don't think that is possible so it should look very uh, user friendly people can actually go and uh, see which are the areas and farmers producing these uh, crops and then this will also promote India's organic because that is the most authentic way of identifying the certified farmers. Mm -hmm. And this will actually push out all the farmers and companies who are using organic but they are not organic. Mm -hmm. So this is how the data can be used. Second is very important, the data which we collect from global. Uh, what are the issues faced by different product categories or the processes? that data can be a learning for the farmers and producers in india so that those can be avoided so if you take example soybean cotton or whatever issues we had in the past mm -hmm. that becomes a learning curve for the industry so this is how the data can be used and third important part which is very important for the industry is interpretation of standards and requirement so this is where third party certification companies like ecocert and other they can help to educate and tell them what are the interpretation of requirements and why it is required so if we address this i think the uh, future is very bright thank you thank you so much sir this was quite insightful uh, moving next uh, indian organic product export is currently majorly bulk packed means 95 percent of the total exports that being done is in a bulk form rather than detail packaging retail packaging so in this regard, I would like to put my next set of questions to Mr. Krishnendu Chattopadhyay. Uh, sir, can you share insights on how retail pack exports can help Indian organic exporters access higher value market and command better prices globally? Ma'am, thank you for asking. Uh, let me take a minute to, uh, to send my greetings to APJ Chairman Mr. Dev, uh, Mr. Shubhanshu, General Manager, uh, General Manager Peter, the fellow colleagues and the dignitaries here, my panelists. Uh, first of all, ma'am, if you look back, like what is the global market size of organics, <coughs> uh, we are hovering around uh, around uh, point, uh, say, 500 million US dollar Indian exports, and the global market is about 138 million US dollar. So that's the vast uh, list that it has. And if you compare the packed uh, retail products, which is at, at around 15% uh, of global market for mm -hmm. sales in, in global markets, 15% sales in packets. So that is what the opportunity is for Indians. So there is two opportunities, growing big in the global market, growing big in domestic market, which is a very, very vast uh, field. And entire world is watching India as the most lucrative markets, marketplace. 
So here we get as producers enormous opportunity to tell our stories. Now the biggest uh, advantage of in retail market, in packed market is that you can really value add the products. You can mm -hmm. tell your stories and which fetches better prices. While in a bulk packaging, uh, often the material does not reach the consumers as it is because it either goes by the intermediary uh, 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 business uh, houses or mostly in bakeries. Retail marketing and the retail brands and the packed products actually reach to the consumers who feel uh, good about it when it is able to establish itself the value and the value faces, the prices that it demands from them. And companies can actually put their thoughts, what they want to capture in that packet and can reach out from uh, produce, you know, the consumers easily. Not only popularizing, making the trust on the brand, but can also demand better prices. So okay. I can see, man, there's enormous opportunity to grow, expand in uh, packed and retail prices overseas. But sir, uh, what are the key challenges in transitioning from bulk to retail pack, especially for the export markets? If we see, man, India has all union situations because we have got terrific 7,500 kilometer coastal lines. We have terrific, uh, uh, you know, communication system. The transport system is fantastic in India. We could be actually market leader worldwide. Now, what is preventing us? I say it's in the it's in the all in mind uh, because most of the bulk, like us, like bulk uh, producers, exporters, we are happy where we are. We are cozy. We are fetching good prices, forgetting that what is can be achieved. What can be achieved actually? Like if you see the difference uh, prices between the bulk and the consumer prices can often reach beyond 20x. Mm -hmm. So that is the, that's the value creation we can add. You know like consumer packs have to be built up on a story and a brand. <coughs> and India, uh, I mean, it's, it's a quite a sad story that Indian brands are not globally recognized. And we do not have any brands of food which ranks even in 50 in the world market. In fact, like uh, if you see like the, all the brands that dominate today, mostly are in US. And naturally, if you see the global organic market is 49% US only. A single country of US demands 49% of global production and of which 35% is packed. It's a very enormous figure. Compared to that, like if you consider this, in spite of this, huge number of farmers and farming areas and the production that we have. We do not have any brands <coughs> ruling in the world or ruling which are splashing somewhere in the world also. It's not the saga for only organic food products. In fact, we do not, apart barring four, uh, four Indian brands, no Indian brands have been chart out in 100 global brands. So lot, thing, lot many things can be done for branding because retail packing, like retail market base, base is on branding. If you're not being able to establish a brand, take it, take it forward with some years and determination, show your authenticity and you know complete traceability of the product. If you can dominate, if you can demonstrate that, you can tell the stories, you can value it, then the brand works. Okay. So that is what I think the challenges are. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, the floor is now open for uh, question and answer session. So if anybody has any question. Yes, sir. Can I somebody pass on the mic? Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Pankaj Sharma, and I run a baby food company, organic baby food company called Hapa Foods. Uh, we started three, three and a half years back. And in the last three years, we are exporting Hapa as packaged food, value-added packaged food from India to eight different countries. And in these countries, we are actually competing with the global brand that you talked about, sir. But I just wanted to highlight uh, the issues and the challenges that we face. Uh, as a manufacturer in the bulk pack from India, right, all the capital investment that we do, we could see the return coming out of it. But the same is not true when you are investing that money for building the brands, right? Because it's the upfront investment that you have to make and hope that someday it will pay off the dividend, right? And the whole value system, value chain which has been aligned, right? It doesn't favor that, 
right? Now, how do you see a brand like Hapa Foods, right, uh, go out globally? Globally, we compete with the Nestle's of the world, Gerber's of the world, right? We're beating them in some of the markets. But it's a huge investment upfront. Uh, how do you see an Indian brand like us going out and creating a name for itself? Because I'm sure you would understand it's a big, big, big investment, right? The communication, the visibility, everything is there, right? Do you have any solution for that? You know, like creating a brand, you have very well uh, said it. Basically, like it takes years to invest and then you can expect some good returns. And this happens only after you establish yourself as a brand owner and your brand speaks for itself, the quality, supremacy quality and the price economy that it demands. So, you know, like only I think because we all like as a supplier to also global market, I often visit different stores in different countries and people what the value actually uh, traceability is number one. So any conscious organic purchaser, first thing he would like to have the complete traceability of the product. It's just not about the which product and which country is the complete traceability, the supply chain, the uh, process flow uh, traceability they want. Apart from that, the first thing they talk about is the packaging. So unless the sustainable packaging is demonstrated and is talked about, so see, like similar products are being marketed and brought every minute by every consumer in other way. If your product has to st uh, you know, stand out, it has to appeal to the customer either by storytelling or by its packaging or by its you know, value addition that you create. So my recommendation would be like, you know, like as a colleague of yours, and this is also our daily job to do it, to, to research more and more to understand the customer philosophy and their understanding the particular demand in particular geography, what they expect from us and meet their demand. If the customer is expecting your packaging to be the first choice in certain market, we should be focusing more onto the uh, you know, packaging solutions, which speaks about yourself, maybe uh, biodegradable, maybe something. So let us, you know, we can uh, uh, talk about more than that. And then value additions is the only thing. So you have to stand out among, among your competitors. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sanjay and I am from Just Organic. Uh, I just want a uh, panel to throw a light uh, that uh, on a planet we are the largest populous uh, country in, uh, in the world. Uh, in a short while we will be become third largest economy. Uh, we are growing at a very healthy GDP rate but when we see our domestic market it is still very very minuscule as compared uh, to the size that we have. So uh, I want to know uh, from the panel through a light, you know, I feel this is a challenge actually. Uh, also we see that, you know, there is a, a sort of a, a organic produce is per perceived as a rich, pro-rich product or, or, you know, uh, the panel talked about the premium 2x, I feel it is also high in that way. Uh, also uh, going ahead we need to expand the market. So that's not happening, it's not becoming a mass product or mass revolution. So I feel there uh, needs a massive investment is required to aware the consumer. I just want to know the, what, what the panel is thinking about, how to grow the domestic market to make it, you know, a organic a mass movement uh, in the country. Thank you. chain, I think the two ends have not yet benefited uh, the most and like uh, Pankaji also said that the trade has been, you know, uh, taking a lot of the value uh, potentially because it was perceived as a very niche market initially but today as you rightly said, if this is a large market and a large potential then the middle chain has to take the similar value what they take for a conventional product and the majority value has to either pass to the consumer or to the farmer. When it will pass to the farmer, there will be motivation to grow more organic. When it will pass to the consumer, there will be motivation to consume more organic. So to my mind, it's just a re recalibration of the equation that we, need, we all need to do together. Yes, sir. My, uh, I mean, what I was uh, 
hinting towards this was the consumer awareness. See, there is still a lot of ground to be covered as far well as consumer awareness is uh, concerned. And also that price gap. So you can't have a product which has got 2x and you expect consumer to buy and become a mass movement. So I think uh, this one aspect, one another is the awareness aspect where a lot of uh, sort of investment would be required to aware the customer of the benefits. So that is not happening right now. So if we want to scale up, uh, we need to uh, uh, not address these two aspects uh, uh, very, very closely. So, so with this, uh, we would like to conclude this uh, session. Uh, the team is available because uh, My name is Asim Diveri and I am the founder of Velvet Organic, which is uh, in organic and uh, we are also in dairy, which is uh, bhart skin and tooth products. So we both the uh, uh, verticals, uh, we are promoting it. Now, uh, recently we are also being uh, <coughs> approved by the CSD canteens and we are supplying Pan-India basis of our products to all the canteens. The problem which we are facing, though Mr. Anil Jadav has already mentioned about it, that the people, train people to really come up and we have those access to directly getting it those products, uh, organic product. Now the main problem which we are facing, uh, the lab testing. We find some tests say yes, pass, some labs say no pass, you can go three, uh, ten number of them, we'll have a different uh, test result. So this is a very uh, difficult problem and we don't know how to, you know, access and, you know, ensure that which lab is the correct one. And since we are supplying to uh, CSD canteens, they will give some X party. That X party will say, okay, this is failed and then you have to run around to prove that that this party testing is not good, this party is good. So this is a real problem which is, you know, uh, suppressing the growth in the industry. Right. I think if this could be addressed by the APIDA and could uh, get a solution for it, it will definitely give a lot of relief to us. Well accepted, sir. We have uh, noted this point. And uh, for uh, any any further question, the team is available, but uh, we may have to vacate this uh, hall now. There is an another program aligned. So. Uh, Hello, one last question. Uh, one, one, one last question. Say, actually, uh, as uh, uh, all my colleagues are, uh, uh, we are discussing, there are two things: lack of, uh, you know, the certifying bodies, and number two, the certification fee is very high. And number three, they take more, num more number of days. We are not able to export our product. I would request APIDA to address all these three, four issues. Kindly help us uh, to export. We are capable of doing anything that is required in the international market quality-wise. Kindly help us in getting uh, more number of... Sir, definitely we have well noted your point. We will discuss in APIDA pavilion. So I mean, with just these... To, uh, uh, just to matlab, uh, give the final this thing. Uh, four new certification bodies uh, will be coming up uh, in a week's time. We will have the notification for that. Uh, uh, we are all over the uh, uh, country. Secondly, we have capped the certification fees. Uh, we have put an upper limit of that. So uh, the certification bodies can't charge you more than the upper limit. So that also has been done. Uh, we will uh, invite your feedback in case that upper limit needs to be uh, changed. Uh, yes, so uh, we are working on all those points. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Priyanka, for uh, moderating this session in a very well-structured manner. And I hope all the participants has, must have been taken the inside. So thank you, everyone, for joining this program.